Hey everyone, it's Nick. I know it's a couple years too late for an update, but if you hear me out, I'd really appreciate it. I know it's a bit impersonal to only be hearing my voice, but in order for me to properly articulate my points, I want to present them in the best way I know how. Let me start off by saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what's happened to the Dual Screens channel and the lack of transparency about why everything has changed. The irony of a channel whose most well-known series is, what are they saying, having communication problems, is not lost on me. I owe everyone who has stuck with the channel for the past couple of years an explanation, because I do genuinely feel bad for all the people I've disappointed when I moved away from making what are they saying videos and editorials. Believe me, I wanted to keep doing what are they saying, I did not want to neglect the channel, and I wanted to let people know what had happened, but I held off on explaining the situation for a couple of reasons. Firstly, and this is probably the weakest excuse that I can make, is that I have been mentally drained, struggling to find the motivation to improve or fix anything. Now, that's my problem. I'll work on that. But the second reason it didn't feel right making this video is not everyone will really want to watch something like this. And frankly, I totally understand why from the standpoint of being a viewer. The third reason is that I was afraid of not being able to explain the situation well enough or even with the best intentions and reasoning, that it would still reflect poorly on me. So here it is. I have been running the channel completely by myself. My former co-host, Matt, has not been a part of the channel since September of 2020. His departure caused a huge rift between us, and we are no longer friends. Now I don't want to blame everything on him, but I am going to call him out for what happened in the summer of 2020. When Matt and I first started taking dual screens seriously, like dedicating time and effort into becoming content creators, Matt came up with a sort of code of conduct for the two of us to follow. Three rules that should have been easy for two people that by this point had known each other for over a decade, shook hands, and agreed to be in it for the long haul. Rule number one, we don't lie and keep secrets from one another. Rule number two, we help and support each other through everything regardless of whether it was personal or dual screens related. Rule number three, we don't cause and spread drama. Matt broke each of those three rules. The ones that he himself came up with, one right after the other. In a way, that third rule is the last reason that I didn't want to call attention to this whole situation. It's causing and spreading drama. At first I thought that this would pass on its own, that I could just not talk about it and it'll resolve itself. Now though, I feel like this whole fiasco has reached a point where it needs to be talked about if for no other reason than so I can have my side of the story explained. These are only going to be the broad strokes. Personally, I don't feel like that'll do the story justice, so I can and will go into far more detail in a separate video. Now, I'll admit that a lot of this will be hearsay, and even though I do have Discord and text message screen caps, I know that isn't definitive proof. That being said, I'm going to stand my ground that what I'm about to say is the truth, and if Matt refutes any of this, and I'm sure he will, he's lying. One such lie was that we had creative differences, and that we could not see eye to eye on how to run the channel. This is false. Matt was the one who was basically in charge of the channel. He, for the most part, decided what videos got made and when, as well as any other major decisions. I rarely, if ever, got to weigh in on anything that went on despite me being the other half of the channel. For example, it was his choice to start streaming on Twitch, because he said, and I quote, Twitch is where all the money is. Fast forward to July 21st. Matt and I were supposed to be working on a video idea he had, the same game different name video. Instead of making any progress on the video, he admits that he made a new Twitch channel and had been streaming on it for the past few days. He apologized for breaking the no lying and keeping secrets rule, but then when I asked him why he did it, instead of an explanation, he gave me excuses. Well, people got confused with our schedule. It's a backup or a joke account. I want to see how far I can get on my own merits. It's just supposed to be for fun and not money. The two that really stuck out to me, even back then, and were incredibly suspicious, and that I called him out for, were, I got the idea from someone else, and, I've already made it, streamed on it for a few days, got a few people on there, no point in asking me to stop now. At the time, 
I just assumed Matt made another impulse decision, something I just got used to him doing all throughout our decade-long friendship. But now I have this, a screenshot from a channel that we had known since March. Matt had reached out to and presumably invited this streamer to his channel before he had ever mentioned it to me. And I'd be willing to bet that he had done this with other people who were followers of the Dual Screens channel in Discord. But frankly, even if this was the only example, he still shouldn't have done it. It's still not right that he went behind my back like this. Of course, I tried reasoning with him that he should not have done this simply on the grounds that he broke the rules that he had made. And I even asked if this meant that he no longer wanted to be a part of dual screens. He hits me with this, that there was one other reason that he wanted to make the channel, because it helps with his depression. And that he was afraid of telling me about the second channel because it would hurt our friendship. In hindsight, this was an extremely manipulative thing to say to me. Even if it's true that he was depressed, he was still objectively guilt-tripping me into allowing him to keep the channel. Unfortunately, it worked. I backed off and decided not to press him. My only consolation was that he promised me that this wouldn't affect our friendship and that he would continue to be a part of dual screens. So I tried making a deal with him. He can promote himself on dual screens if he promotes dual screens on his channel. Almost immediately, he explodes in popularity, getting raids left, right, and center from bigger streamers and practically double-digit viewers almost every stream. Now, at first, I thought this was a good thing. At first, I was happy for him. But then on the 28th, a week since our conversation, he does this. I raid his channel as a show of good faith to support and encourage him. He gives me a really cold greeting. Oh. Hey, dual screens. How was your stream? Not even a week after his popularity boom, he's already brushing me off. Like we're not even on first name basis anymore. To boot, people in his chat were asking who I even was. Good to know that he was not upholding his end of the bargain. Worse still is his response to the people asking who I was. Oh, you know my channel dual screens? He's the other guy. 13 years of knowing each other. Four years of doing dual screens together. Being called the other guy on his channel? That just hurt to hear. He messages me after his stream, apologizing for calling me his co-host. He didn't call me his co-host. He called me the other guy. In August, I had a family emergency. I'll go into more detail in that separate video, but for now, just understand that it affected me deeply. Not to mention that the Dual Screens channel was stagnating. We weren't putting out videos as often as before. I had wanted to continue making videos, but Matt, despite promising me that he would still be around on the channel and that I shouldn't do it without him, he was never around. I tried my best to keep calm, but things were starting to reach a boiling point. He had promised me that he would still support the channel, but he never once shouted me out or gave me any credit for my involvement on dual screens, or hell, even his own channel, despite me being around on it and promoting him as I promised I would. Another thing that really upset me was that despite telling me that he had no intention of making money through that channel, as soon as he hits affiliate status, he immediately turns on monetization and starts accepting subs, donations, and bits. Now, I wouldn't find out about this until much later, but that's just one more thing that he lied to me about and kept hidden from me. One day, I sat down and I spoke to him at length about everything that was happening between us. Without getting hostile or angry, I explained that I was no longer comfortable with his channel or the way I was being treated. He accuses me of stressing him out, that I'm trying to take something away from him and that it's hurting him that I don't trust him enough. He once again goes for the guilt trip, and once again, it works. I did what I could to try to solve this diplomatically, but really, it was just me caving in and giving him more of what he was already getting. I realize now that I was being really stupid for letting this go on as long as it did, but keep in mind, we had known each other for 13 years. I was expecting, or maybe the right word is hoping, 
for some level of loyalty from him. We agree to take a break from each other. A few days pass before I reach out to him again. He responds with this. Yet another guilt trip. 21 days after this message, I hear nothing from him. He's completely ghosted me, all the while continuing on that channel like nothing was wrong. September 15th, I finally get fed up with waiting, and I message him that we need to talk. He makes every excuse possible for why he can't talk, not that day, not tomorrow, or basically any other day. I insist, stating that the matter is too important to just do over the phone. Eventually, he relents and tells me to come over to his house, and I do. This would be the most frustrating hour of my entire life. To start off, he's not taking the conversation or me seriously, taking every opportunity to laugh at my misfortune and completely dismiss everything that I had been going through. I'm sure that in his side of the story, I'm either being overdramatic or needlessly hostile. I assure you, it was not needless. I had a very good reason for being upset with him. I had reached my limit. He had shown me nothing but dishonesty and disrespect. And the worst part about it is that he doesn't think he's done anything wrong. Matthew, I had explicitly told you what was wrong. For three months, I had told you that your actions and words were affecting me. And yet you're going to sit there and say, you don't understand why I'm upset? No, I was not being overdramatic. I wasn't just playing this up or putting on a show. I was genuinely angry to the point where I genuinely felt like you had stabbed me in the back. I had told you, warned you, that I was not okay with what you were doing, and yet you continued to do it with zero regard for my feelings. I had enough. I had already given him far more second chances than I feel he deserved, but I gave him one more. I asked, do you or do you not want to be a part of dual screens? At that point, I already knew the answer, but after three months of near constant lies, I needed a definitive yes or no. And unsurprisingly, he said no. Not content with abandoning me and the channel, he then starts spreading misinformation about why we were no longer friends, telling people that I had fired him out of jealousy, or that I apparently didn't understand what he was going through. No matter how or who he tells the story to, he's always the victim. This is my official statement. I did not fire Matt. He chose to leave. To this day, he refuses to speak to his audience or new social group about what happened between us, claiming that we should let bygones be bygones because he doesn't have any ill will towards me. Matt, stop pretending like you didn't do anything wrong. This isn't just some jealousy-fueled channel drama. You actively damaged our friendship by being spiteful and deceitful. For three years, you told me that we shouldn't lie to each other. You started this all off with a lie. For three years, you told me everything we do, we do together. And yet, you are the one who just decides to go off on your own without consulting me. For three years, I had to share dual screens with you. Because it's our channel. But the moment you start getting more attention on a different channel, you refuse to share anything with dual screens, but demand that dual screens continue to benefit you and you alone. For three years, you said that you cared about being a part of dual screens because it mattered to you and you were proud of what we had achieved. And yet, you were quick to wash your hands of the channel before you had even said that you didn't want to be there anymore. Are these the actions of someone who has no ill intent? Even if I am to accept that this is somehow unintentional and that Matt just kept making stupid mistakes, these were a lot of mistakes. Mistakes that he didn't and does not want to own up to. Mistakes that ultimately jeopardized our friendship because he refuses to take responsibility for his actions. Mistakes that have caused me to believe, to the contrary, that he does have ill intent and has gone out of his way to upset me. I've tried to reason with him. I've tried to be rational. I've made every attempt I could to maintain our friendship. And yet he still doesn't want to listen to me. So, I've given up on being civil with him. I just wanted to get that off my chest. 
These past three years have been incredibly stressful for me, and not all of it is because of the feud between us. I'm not trying to host a pity party, but that's why the channel content changed. Not because I wanted to insult or spite anybody, but because I was just trying to do something to keep my spirits up. I kept streaming on Twitch because I enjoyed interacting with the people on there, especially when my girlfriend and I started playing games together. I know the highlights don't do well, but I made them because I do enjoy editing videos and I enjoy making people laugh. Yes, I could have been studying new languages to make more what are they saying videos, but understand that I would have had to have learned a lot of different languages. Hell, according to one of the documents Matt gave me about all the ideas we had, I would have had to have learned several languages. This might sound like I'm making excuses, but this is a team effort, and I don't have a team anymore. Once again, I'm sorry to the people who came to the channel and stuck with it for as long as they have because they want more What Are They Saying content. I'm not giving up on the channel, but the What Are They Saying content is unfortunately on indefinite hiatus. If because of that you want to unsubscribe, then I totally understand. That being said, if you've stuck around this long, despite everything, you have far more respect for the channel than Matt ever did, and for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you still want to stick around and give the streams a chance and hang out with me and my friends, then I'll do what I can to entertain you, because that's what I enjoy doing. If you made it to the end of this video, Listen to everything I had to say. I truly appreciate it. This is Nick, and I'll see you next time.